Okay, so here we have the uh, internal foot inside the capsule that comes off in one piece. Um, we'll take a look at it here. Look at the big frog stay. Now you don't notice these frog stays because usually the outside is um, dried out. If it's dry weather, you usually only notice them if the horse's foot have, has been in water for a while. Okay. All right, so let's let's take the hoof capsule off, and what I want you to see is that the horse, this is like a shoe. I want you to think of this like a shoe or a boot, and what's going to come out of there like a foot, because it is a foot. This is not your horse's foot. This that's inside here and that goes up here is your horse's foot. And the hoof capsule grows in one piece and comes off in one piece, off of that foot, um, which is covered with skin that just happens to grow this. Just like hair grows out of your skin. You grow fingernails, things like that. Okay, um, this is keratin. And so it's coming, the, what you're going to find in there is skin like this, dermis, that grows this hoof capsule. Okay, so we're just going to take the hoof capsule off. Now, when you get laminitis, see, the mechanics of that, if you get a long toe up here, then um, there's stress pulling the foot actually out of the capsule. And when a foot rotates and goes up here, this periopal can stretch up here. This periopal can stretch this far. Okay, so let's take the foot out of the capsule. We're going to come around here. Hopefully I won't knock a bunch of stuff off. It's just like a nice tight fitting boot. I don't want to knock things over. That's why I'm kind of taking it easy there. See, now when the foot rotates, this is what happens. Only you'll see this periopal skin stretching clear up to here. But, this would be now the new position of the foot in the capsule. And so, this has basically become disattached, and now you have a new capsule growing from this position. This is why um, laminitis is so difficult, because um, you're trying to grow one foot off while growing the other on. Um, where it gets really bad is if it rotates clear up into here, in the coronary band. There we go. Now there's the inner foot. Now once I soak it more, the skin color will be the same skin color as this. Now what you're seeing here is just the skin of the horse without the hair on it. See? This capsule is meant to grow in one piece from this foot. Okay, so what we want to look at here is the mechanism of what is called the frog stay. Okay, let's just set this down for a minute. And let's look at the frog stay. The frog stay is a big chunk of frog that grows from the frog corium between the bulbs. Right here. It's very good sized. See there? See how thick it is? Okay, so it grows from right between, right between here. And it's a major part of um, keeping the foot stable and uh, the suspension system of the foot. Okay, your digital cushion is from here to here. Your frog stay is from here to here. And uh, 
then of course you you want to it's about an inch from here to here and then you want a good inch of frog too from here down to here if you can get it and that's going to give your horse a lot of um, suspension a lot of spring in his step you're going to have um, good hoof mechanism without a frog stay you cannot have good hoof mechanism and trimming the heels out down to the periopal flap here um, that will well that trims the frog stay out pulls all this down and under the foot okay so let's just put this oop, oop, right here for now now here's your frog stay now I want you to see something here Okay, now, this right here, the frog hooks onto this right here, this is all flexible in here. We're going to put this here. And I want you to see how the frog stay works. Stand up here. Okay, when the pastern descends, it hits the digital cushion first. And then it runs right into this. This holds the digital cushion up and in place. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'll show you what it does here. So the pastern hits this and it descends like that. See there, that is why you don't want to just be taking the heels down to the to the frog, to frog height, because you may not even have any frog thickness. And every time you do that, you wind up trimming more and more of the heel out, more and more of the frog stay out to where you get nothing in here. I'll show you what, what you get, if I can find it. Okay, this is another hoof capsule here. Okay, this horse had no frog stay, really at all. He had collapsed heels that were run forward. And technically, this, look at the 30 degree hairline. When people force their horse into a 30 degree hairline, it trims uh, the support out of the back of the foot. The frog has no room to grow. It pulls all the anatomy down that grows the frog stay between the bulbs and it pulls it out. And you wind up with this little number here. See, not much of a frog stay at all. Look, there's even a hole in it. Okay, that's what you do when you trim the heels out. Okay, notice the difference in the angle of these two feet. This one has a 30 degree hairline and this one, I'm not sure what the angle is, but it's probably more like, um, I don't know, anywhere from 13 to 18 lot a lot higher than this now if I was to force this foot into having a 30 degree hairline I wouldn't have any heels and I wouldn't have any frog stay and I wouldn't the function the foot would not function correctly okay so I want you to look at this okay this foot was meant to be up like this and supported by that frog stay and then have some frog under that and some room under that for the suspension system see there and and see it it pushes up it's pushing up it's hard to push down and so when this horse's leg is going down like this okay that's going to push it back up Let's see. What is happening is people have been taught to trim the heels out of their horses, mimicking the image of a wild horse that people didn't know it, but it had worn its heels out. Okay, watch this. See? Okay, see the pastern bone here? When that descends down, I can't push it down as far as it'll go. But this pastern bone here will go clear down to here. Okay. And so when it descends down, it sends, descends down onto this digital cushion. The digital cushion descends down onto the frog stay. 
and is pushing it down like this and the frog stay is pushing it up like that and that's what gives your horse correct suspension, correct hoof function, um, guards and saves his tendons from being overexerted. See? Let's go ahead and put this in here and do it. Okay, there we go. I probably can't make it do it, but see if that horse was really running and that pastern right here was descending down onto that. See there? Let me put it on something so you can see it better. See if I can probably gonna break this. Yep, that's not gonna work. Well, I wish I had a glass or something, something else to set it on. Um, I see nothing close. Okay, well, anyway. See, this all stretches in there. Okay, see this? See when that pastern descends? How it descends onto the digital cushion, but the frog stay is holding the digital cushion in place. See, all I can make it go is about how the horse walks even. I can't put enough weight on it. Remember, you got 1,200 pounds, which condenses and magnifies into more on a small foot. Okay, let's take this off again. Just a minute. Kind of wipe up after ourselves here. can rotate that much in the capsule and be sitting in there it's grown a whole new soul from what you see here what you see here it's growing a whole new soul they always talk about coffin bone rotation because they're always looking at x-rays and they don't realize that the fork horse actually has a whole foot in there they just think it's a capsule with parts all the dissections you see and everything else it's hard to believe that people can do so many dissections and still don't really understand the foot of the horse. See, because of false hoofs, false hoods, in the science, in the anatomy, in the understanding. Before you ever start slicing and dicing this, you better look at this foot as a whole unit. Okay, well, that's all for now. Hope that you understand a little bit more about why this frog stay is so necessary, why heel buttress holding the foot up and supporting it is so necessary. Okay.